Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. I am Marichi Castro Guevara, Faculty of the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies of the School of Humanities, which is hosting our event this morning. On behalf of my colleagues at the Interdisciplinary Studies Department, um, and I am joined here by Mr. Alan Pastrana and Mr. Eos Trinidad, um, and together with our colleagues at the Office of the President of the Atenea de Manila University and the University of Communication and Public Relations Office, I wish to welcome all of you, our administrators, faculty members, uh, faculty, uh, students, um, uh, professionals, staff, and guests who have traveled to the Atenea de Manila to join us this morning to listen to the lecture and performance of Mr. Alfonso C. Bolipata this year's recipient of the Gawad Tanglaw ng Lahi, conferred by the Ateneo de Manila University. We are truly honored that Mr. Bolipata, Bolipata or Coke as he is uh, fondly called, is with us today to deliver a lecture on his journey as a musician par excellence and a maestro to so many students. Some of these students have pursued music as a career and vocation, and some of them did not, but have benefited nonetheless from the values of discipline, hard work, and appreciation for music that Coke instilled in them. My own daughter belongs to the latter category. Yes, Coke, my daughter Maita took violin lessons under you in 1997 when she was seven years old. She belonged to the same class of uh, Chino Gutierrez, who has become a renowned international violinist, like his teacher, like you pop now. Um, so I still remember the, the um, the thrill that my family and I had experienced when we listened to our daughter, Maita, play five variations of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Did you know that? Very <laughs> variation in Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. What better way for us to appreciate the prowess of Mr. Balipata as a violinist and as a teacher than to listen to him play the violin this morning as part of his lecture. During his violin performances, Coke will be joined by 12 of his students who are members of the Pundakit Virtuosi, a chamber ensemble composed of scholars from Casa San Miguel's Cuerda Squadros music program. As you may know, last September 26, the Ateneo de Manila University held an academic convocation to confer its traditional university awards. These awards recognize the life and works of men and women in our society who exemplify the values of our university. For 2017, the recipients are four individuals and one group, all exemplars in their respective fields. The Ateneo de Manila University created the Gawad Tanglang ng, Gawad Tanglao ng Lahi to single out those who have dedicated their life's work to the pursuit of Filipinism and the Filipino identity through any of the channels of culture. This year's recipient of the Gawad Tanglao, Tanglao ng Lahi is Mr. Alfonso C. Bolipata. A violinist trained at the Juilliard School, Coke was at the cusp of an international career when he decided to come back to the Philippines to teach violin to the children of Zambales' farmers, fisher folk, overseas workers, and other low-income families. Through 25 years and, uh, and with the help of other artist family members, Coke developed Casa San Miguel, a community-based music and art school which boasts of an auditorium, artists' residences, a gallery, and a museum of local history and culture. Many of CASA scholars are now mentors themselves, teaching underprivileged children in, in San Miguel, Zambales, and Tondo, Manila. Gentlemen, I am pleased to present to you the Ateneo de Manila's 2017 Gawad Tanglao ng Lahi recipient, Mr. Alfonso Coke Sibalipata, for his lecture and performances with the Pundakit Virtuosi. Palakpakan po natin siya.
and left for Juilliard when I was 12. Uh, so I started performing when I was 12. Uh, uh, I, I come from a family of musicians. So I have a brother who plays the piano, and another brother who plays the cello. So uh, in New York, we were based for about 15 years, performing all over the world, uh, in Asia, in Europe, mostly in Asia, in Europe. Um, and then I came back in 1991. Pinatubo, Iraq, in 1991, and our, our farm was kind of devastated. And I thought, um, you know, maybe I, would, I should come home and do something uh, for the province and, and for the family. So I put up at the foundation, I built the building in 1993. And this school that we celebrate or that was uh, awarded, we put up in 1996. So since then, that's what I've been doing up to, about, uh, well, up to now. Um, it is our 25th year, our silver year uh, of doing this. So we started with 12 kids under three, under my, just me teaching, and now, these kids with me, I'll, I'll introduce them later, are my um, my alter egos. So each of them <laughs> studies with me, so there's 12 of them, and they each teach their own six students. So that way we're able to maintain the school, even if, if, we, if we have no money. And they're very good teachers, and many of previous virtuosi have gone on to win competitions. Um, they've gone on, two of them just, just came back from AYO. They were chosen to be part of the Asian Youth Orchestra, composed of the best musicians from Asia. So I think the program is quite good. Uh, and curious enough, in every orchestra in the Philippines, there's always one from Casa San Miguel. So I think that's a sign that we are doing something. Even though they don't, they don't have degrees as teachers, that they're doing something very, uh, uh, very effectively. So congratulations. I'll introduce them. This is Julian Duque. Julian is Christian This is Vincent Roman Van. Christian is This Miriam Magsaysay. She's 18 years old. Gio Esteban, she's 14. Jessica is Max Sanchez, she is 18. This is Gandhi Bisotelio, she is 16. Ari Asenia, she's 15. Simon Tabon is 15. Our youngest one is Vivian uh, Marcos, she is 12. How old is 13? 13. That's a big difference. This is uh, Gabri Gos, which is who you saw in the video. He is 14, very, very tall 14. And this is uh, Arian Albeza, he is 15. So um, a few of them will be going to conservatory, hopefully, in the coming school year. This is Earl Sherbo, because he's a But Earl was with us when he was, I think, 8 years old or 9 years old. He now works in the community, but um, this is Earl. He's in his mid-20s. <laughs> So we all, we're all holding an instrument. I'm sure many of you, being in the humanities, should know what this is, but I'll, I'll say it nonetheless. <laughs> this is a violin. Belongs to the which family? The string family of the orchestra, or the viol family. So there, there are four members. So there are yeah, there are four members of the viol family. So the violin, and then that one over there is the viola. This one is the cello, and the largest one, which we don't have, is the double bass. Uh, so they're all shaped the same way, um, and they're all made of several kinds of wood. Right? This is um, the body of the violin is made out of uh, spruce and maple. The back is maple, as in maple syrup. The front is spruce, um, and the the, ri the ribs are also made out of um, uh, maple. And then there's a fingerboard, which is made out of ebony, and the chin rest also out of ebony. 
So the body is very much like the human body. You know, there's a head, we call this the scroll, the ears, these are the pegs. There's a neck, there's a shoulder, there's a belly, there's a back, and there's even, uh, for the cello, there's an end pin. Right? So everything happens here in the violin. The violin is about 400 years old. This one is about 150 years old. So I take, your, take very good care of this. Um, what else can I say about the violin? Um, it has four strings. Now in the in the original days, the strings were made out of of cat gut. So if you can pusa or sheep, they used to dry it and then twist it and then stretch it, and those are the strings. But now with modern day technology, these are now gold and aluminum. Uh, there's a there's a oh, there's a wire in the middle that is wound in either aluminum or uh, silver or gold. So the strings are very expensive, which is one of our big problems here. Yeah, whenever we, we break a string. Right, so to, to play the violin, we need one of these. And this is, does anybody know? This is the bow. So the bow is also made of a piece of wood, although some of them now are fiberglass. But this is Pernambuco from the Brazilian rainforest. So it's just basically a piece of stick with some fibers. Does anyone know what the fibers it's made of? And this is horse hair. hair. Do you know why it was picked? Why horse hair is, is used? They use horse tail because if you look under a microscope, the hair is very, it has a very rough edge. It's almost like a saw edge. And that's what's used to grab the string to make the sound. And so it's, uh, it's tied to the, other side, to the other side of the bow with a screw. And we screw the, the hair tight like this. If you put a little bit of rosin, rosin, which is a, a, a extract from a maple tree, you know, the, the resin from the, from the tree is dried, cooked, and then we use that to, put, to add friction to the, to the, to the bow. So the, the violin is a very musical, it's a very vocal, um, vocal uh, instrument. The closest to singing I think that you will ever get. So we, use, we play it by drawing a string. We can also, uh, we call this pizzicato, so you can pluck the string. Uh, we can play two notes at the same time. harmonics, like whistling. So there are many tricks to, to, to the violin. And I think to illustrate the number of gestures or the things that the violin can do, we will ask two of our, our violins here to play a piece by, uh, by Sarasani called Navara. So this is Julian Duque and Vincent Roman Ban will play Navara by Sarasani.
course, the music is also about the world inside us. I think yeah, sometimes language will fail us, and we realize, at least I have, that, um, in, as I got older, that some, some things really lie outside our, our ability to speak. So music is really about being able to express things that we cannot uh, express with words. So we'd like to play for you something um, Filipino this time. This is Sanay Gulano Makas by Willie Cruz.
we all play music for many different reasons, but I think music is important for three things, I think, which we all have in common. Uh, one is the discipline that, is, that requires, that comes with it. No? So we all have to practice <laughs> at least two to three hours every day. And in the practice, we learn about um, cooperation, we learn about being leading, about following, about being dominant, being a follower. Um, and it, it makes us really much stronger people. So I really believe in, in this, in what we do as for, uh, for that value alone. Second, I think it's important because music, much of it, although technolo technology has changed it with recordings and, uh, and everything that's on YouTube now, but music is really just in a library. Before, before all of this came, music was really just dead pages in a library. So it needs performers to bring the message of, of the composer. So we've been composing since 1400, 1500. So the story of man, of humanity, and our our uh, transition from bar from being barbaric to to to, um, <laughs> to human to hu human people is very important, and, and it's documented in, in, in the music that, that has been written. It has to be always alive, and these performers to be brought to life. So I encourage everyone to always you know, go to concerts, you know, not always recordings, because recordings are just interpretations. Um, I think we'd like to end or play one more piece. It's a beautiful piece by Bach, uh, Bach Double Concerto, which will feature me and Julian.
learn something today. And I think again, I'm from Mam Hilda, Mam Ayuchi, for this lovely morning. I mean, if they want to bury for yes, peace yes. as a way of goodbye, and thank you. We still have an open forum, okay? Yes. <laughs> so this is Summer Concerto just to wake everyone up. Summer Concerto by Vivaldi. <laughs>